Just like everyone who heard about cybersecurity as a career when I was a wee lad, I was naively convinced I could land a job right out of college making an easy hundred grand salary. But boy was I wrong! You might also have seen in boot camps and possible videos that claim you can land a guaranteed job in six months if you just follow their advice or pay for their course. Well, that's not what we're doing in this video. Adapted to multiple other tech spaces, the tech iceberg, as I like to call it, can also be adapted to learning cybersecurity. So if you make it to the end of this video, you might stand a better chance at landing a job in 2025 as a junior cybersecurity analyst or even a junior penetration tester, which by the way is a lot more difficult of a position to get. You are now one of my elite employees. Simply put, if you're qualified enough to be hired on as a penetration tester, you're likely qualified enough to be a junior security analyst. And I think you'll see why by the end of this video. And sadly enough, the iceberg that we're going to cover is just the baby beginner one. There's also mid to senior level icebergs. Now each level of the iceberg is ranked more or less according to difficulty. And the deeper you get, the more you'll start to feel the five stages of grief learning cybersecurity. This iceberg is just a collection of potential avenues to pursue that are relevant to the upcoming 2025 cybersecurity job market. Now, starting at the tip, that's what she said. <laughs> we have the bare bones basics. The very well known A plus certificate covers more or less what all these IT roles would need to know to help fix a computer problem at a tier one or entry level help desk position in a small to enterprise enterprise level environment. You'll learn how a computer works fundamentally and how to touch them the right way. Well known, a certificate that's older than me, very broad, potentially too broad for its own good, but a widely accepted great start into IT for someone who hasn't had a job troubleshooting computer issues before or hasn't spent their entirety of their adulthood playing World of Warcraft. Like me, the Google IT certificate being a cheaper, albeit unknown alternative for those who don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on their first step into IT. And it's even cheaper if you take advantage of the sales they regularly have have, like the one they're currently having at 40% off their yearly subscription, making it over half the price cheaper than the A+, with access to everything they have. The next level, of course, being networking. The Network Plus, a lazy man CCNA, but ultimately, unless you're heavily going into network security, you won't need to go as deep in the cables as the CCNA does. And you certainly don't want to be caught in an interview saying something like, I don't have much experience with networking. Oh no, like... <laughs> Never know, you know. Based on a true story, by the way. The next layer is what I like to call talking the talk. Security principles. Multiple options for learning why everything needs securing, learning general frameworks for implementing security, and ultimately teaching you how to explain the importance of security to those who don't give a shit about it, more or less in order of difficulty. As you can see, ISC has a handful of these. Big picture security certificates, starting from a small itty bitty breadth of knowledge to a literal fire hose in your mouth worth of knowledge. With some questioning the efficacy of the CISSP covering so much, having taken it myself and fully knowing how often it's asked for, I'd say it's a worthwhile alternative to any one of these certificates if you can stomach the amount of stuff that it covers. The Google Cybersecurity Certificate offers similar coverage in the basic principles with the added benefit of touching subjects that the other basic certificates do not. Now CompTIA of course has two options as well, boasting a well-known name to put on your resume. Don't be surprised if you see a fair bit of overlap between lower level certificates. Either way, any one of these will get you to start thinking like a cybersecurity professional. Now once you can talk the talk, it's it's time to walk the walk. Put your money where your mouth is and start actually doing security work in our next layer. In any one of these certificates, you'll learn the basics of blue teaming and defending computers, servers, users, websites, anything that needs defending really against the bad guys. This is the level where you need to form a solid understanding of phishing analysis, network traffic analysis, security monitoring, endpoint security, threat intelligence, SIMS, digital forensics, and incident response. And again, if falling down the path of network security, you have Cisco's CyberOps Associate. Unfortunately, just a multiple choice exam, but it's technical enough to provide effective knowledge that can be put to actual hands-on work. Now, the remaining four are much more hands-on. Try Hack Me is a beginner-friendly platform offering a SOC level learning path with learning modules that you can walk through in a hands-on and hand-holdy way. <laughs> the most affordable of the bunch and with the highest return on investment, in my opinion, but also the easiest of the bunch. PJSA by TCM Secure. OSDA by Offsec and Blue Team Level 1 by Security Blue Team are all roughly 24 hour exams. Go figure. Someone's copying someone somewhere, always. No multiple choice, scenario based, and real hands on. Obviously, it goes without saying, but if you're trying to learn or explain to someone that you know how to ride a bike by answering questions, explaining how to ride a bike instead of just 
riding a bike? It's as they call a fool's errand. Another level deeper in our iceberg, you'll find more advanced continuations of security operations training. Cisco CyberOps Professional, still mostly multiple choice, but they did sprinkle in some fill in the blanks. Ooh. Try Hack Me has their somewhat new SOC level two path, going from easy to hard difficulty, which are essentially just additional, more difficult learning modules. Buckle up for that one, folks. The training wheels are coming off. Blue Team level two, a 72 hour hands-on exam, requiring a written report. Hack the Box has their CDSA, where you have seven days to fill out a given template report. An exam that you can only take once you've completed their SOC analyst job role path, which is where a lot of the learning happens. And while it does look similar to Try Hack Me's modules, they're not the same. They're much harder. E-Learn Security has their ECTHP, a four day report style exam as well. And while it's advised to complete their threat hunting professional learning path, it's not required like Hack the Box's certification. And last, but certainly not least, is Cyber Defender's CCD, a 48 hour hands-on exam, no report, but don't let that fool you. In my opinion, it's one of the hardest of the bunch. So up till now, you've learned how to defend, hopefully, if you took your studies seriously. But ultimately the effectiveness of defending is knowing what you're defending against and how the thing is you're defending works. At this level and above, you could very well land a junior security analyst position. But the applicant pool these days is a wee bit high and you might need to go deeper. That's what she said. And lucky for you, you can. There's more you can do. Coding languages. Now I've said you don't need to learn coding before, but learning how software programs, operating systems work at their core, it's just a bunch of code. Just like understanding how the human body works and how it reacts to different viruses and diseases, it's helpful to know how a computer operating system behaves when it too gets a virus. Similar to understanding DNA or RNA and viruses, as a virologist, it's going to help you to understand various types of code. Java, Python, and C being programming languages that suit different needs in the tech space. But if you can learn one, you can learn another. And at this point in your learning, you have undoubtedly undoubtedly heard ad nauseum the term SQL injection. Learning how SQL works in accessing databases is beneficial to better understanding how to protect against such an attack. And similarly, PHP can also be abused by SQL injections, cross-site scripting, session hijacking, and much more. Sure, you can learn how the attacks work, generally speaking, and what to look out for, but it's better to know how PHP works fundamentally to better understand the attack and to defend. And again, once you get a good grasp of one coding language, the rest becomes easier to understand. This is important because you will be looking at a lot of command lines and executed scripts in your time as an analyst. Now, everything included up till now is more or less what I learned in my cybersecurity bachelor's program. However, you'll notice this isn't the bottom of the iceberg yet. And that's because there's a natural progression from blue teaming to red teaming, from defense to offense. And further down the iceberg is stuff that I didn't really get in my bachelor's program out of my degree to give yourself even better odds of landing that sweet job. You can go deeper into tier one offense. Everything below coding has now entered the realm of red teaming. If you only knew the power of Mardeoc. All of these certificates require hands-on work with virtual environments to either find enough flags, as is the case with Zero Point Security CRTO and INE's EJPT and CPPT exams, or writing a pen test report within the allotted time, documenting your elite hacking skills, as is the case with TCM Securities, PJPT, Offsex OSCP, and hack the boxes CBBH and CPTS, with the only major differences between the exams being hack the boxes requirement of passing their respective learning paths. The other is you could just YOLO the exam. You effectively learn the same basic pen testing methodologies that allow you to really get into the mindset of a bad guy attempting to break in. Got like, you know, literally. Huh? No, I'm okay. <laughs> a mindset that requires you thinking of new and creative ways to break in while remaining undetected. So while defending the castle requires basic understanding of hacking tactics, the stuff you learn in any one of these certifications will broaden your mind. Naturally, the progression after tier one offense is tier two offense, where you'll find more difficult pen testing exams, which further broadens your hacking tool set to include more sophisticated exploits to break into things while also providing the necessary patches needed to fix the vulnerabilities. And with only CRTO being a purely capture the flag style exam, the others include a report that must be submitted. These exams build on your previous knowledge that you've learned from the tier one offense exams. All of these exams requiring multiple days of salty screen staring and anxious report writing, a beefier TCM security exam, three offsec ones, and a more advanced hack the box one, all offering slightly different focuses in the broad space that is penetration testing. Again, with their purpose being to expand your hacking and pen testing toolkit. Only major difference again being the hack the box CWEE requires that you first complete the senior web penetration tester learning path. Surely at this point, there can't be any more to this 
cybersecurity iceberg, right? Wrong! It never ends! Welcome to cybersecurity. Next level, we see Offsex OSEE, a 72 hour exam that requires you to write a functioning exploit from scratch that abuses Windows operating systems. Then of course you follow it up with a report, a beefy report. Now exploits are one thing, but knowing how to deliver exploits to an endpoint that takes advantage of the vulnerability in that endpoint to achieve a hacker's ultimate goal of gaining access to something requires even more knowledge. Maldev, a malware development platform with over 140 learning modules to really teach you all you need to know to get started making your own malware on top of your own exploits. Now, being at the bottom of the iceberg, you have achieved God tier offense and defense. You're more than ready to apply to those junior security analyst positions, and you're certainly ready to try applying to the junior pen testing ones. Now, I know this is a lot to try and achieve. You might be thinking, am I supposed to get all of these? No, not at all. You're supposed to just get a few and get a job because that's the main reason that certificates exist to help you land a job or a promotion which is also like landing a new job. And really, my best advice is that you should only have to acquire one or two at any one of these iceberg levels to stand a chance at landing a job. So the roadmap of this video, I've conveniently broken it down into three categories, complete and utter noobs, and also people who don't learn technical stuff very easily or very quickly. You've shunned technology your whole life in favor of video games. This really kicks ass, doesn't it? Sports, cars, women, what have you. If I asked you to update your display adapter driver from device manager, you'd probably look at me like I just spoke another language. What the actual fuck did you just say to me right now? You'll probably want to ease into this. For all of y'all, I'd recommend this roadmap. It's the easiest of the bunch. It gears you up to try and find a junior security analyst role, and you'll most likely struggle with the bottom of this iceberg. No, 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 don't say that. And you might honestly not have to ever touch any of the pen testing knowledge at any point in your life. Now, it might seem like a security analyst should know everything, right? But defense is made much easier by security tools, SIMs, EDRs, etc. We just need to know how to use these security tools, which is significantly easier than trying to find everything that can be exploited in a company's environment and provide pen testing services. Category two, you know your way around a computer. You've also probably played computer games. Maybe you had a super basic help desk job or system administrator job. You don't know a ton about networking and know cybersecurity is important in some regard, but just haven't found the motivation to learn and attempt to find a cybersecurity job. Also someone who's pretty good at picking up technical knowledge and also applying it. For you, I'd recommend this medium difficulty roadmap. You'll likely be able to handle some pen testing concepts over time and slowly work your way into some serious job security in your junior security analyst role, if that's where you wanna be for the rest of your life, or if you foresee yourself transitioning into a pen testing role where you can write reports all day. Woo! Category three, you're mad smart. Whether or not you have any IT background is irrelevant. You can pick up technical concepts as if they're second nature to you. You're constantly interested in figuring out how things work. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. Math and science have come natural to you, and they were the easiest classes for you growing up. You're meant for this. For folks like you, you'll wanna check out what I like to call the Mad Hat Roadmap. With this on your resume, you should have absolutely no problem landing a junior cybersecurity job, unless your resume sucks. And now before someone complains about me not including SANS or GX certifications, you know, the $10,000 certifications, to those of you who are interested in those, I'd advise attempting to get a scholarship with SANS through their bachelor's program, where you'll make the biggest bang out of your butt. A bunch of highly respected, expensive certifications, all while getting your bachelor's degree as well. Two for one special, which brings me into the subject of college. If you're dead set on a government job, the roadmap changes entirely to get certifications that the government cares about. And lucky for you, WGU has a bachelor's program that runs you through a lot of them. There's your government cybersecurity job roadmap. I mentioned it earlier, but keep in mind that every certificate you obtain simply makes it easier for you to land a job, simply makes you more appealing as a candidate for a job. Someone can get a junior security analyst job with zero certificates, one certificate, it doesn't matter because you always need to be on the lookout for a opportunity to get your foot through the door and never assume you're not qualified enough for a job just because you don't match everything in the job listing. Oh.